in our previous section we have seen uh, the communication between host 1 and host 6 or in other words uh, we have seen the communication between different subnets but uh, we have taken the example that host 1 and host 6 when they came live into the network they uh, generated garp message and because leaf 3 uh, received the garp from host 1 and leaf 5 received garp from host 6 so both leaf 3 and leaf 5 they uh, generated the bgp evpn update because of that leaf 3 was already aware about 20.1.1.5 and the mac address 666 and likewise leaf 5 was already aware about uh, the host one 10.1.1.3 and mac address 1111 with the help of bgp evpn update and we have discussed about the communication between host one and host six. Now, uh, we will take another example wherein you can see that uh, host six is silent. It means that when host six joins the network, it is not going to generate any GARP message. That is why leaf five is not going to uh, know about host six and also it cannot generate any bgp evpn update <clears throat> on the other hand you can see that on leaf 3 we have host 1 so as soon as host 1 uh, comes online it is going to generate the garp message with the help of that leaf 3 is going to generate the bgp evpn update and you can also see on the right hand side uh, which is the bgp evpn control plane or the bgp evpn update uh, you can see with leaf 5 it already knows about 10.1.3 and 1111 right the l2 vni against that the l3 vni and the next up is 333 or 3.3.3.3 which is leaf 3 and also it received the router mac which is abc <clears throat> okay also if you see the bgp uh, table into the leaf 5 you can see it also knows about uh, so you, we can as of now delete this particular information because we are assuming that host 6 is silent. So as of now, let's remove this particular entry. So I removed it. Also, you can see that both leaf 5 uh, and leaf 3, they are generating uh, the route type 5 or the normal prefix for the against the SVI 10 slash 8 20 slash 8 with the router Mac and the L3 VNI as we discussed in our previous section also that route type 5 is purely prefix based okay so as soon as we create the SVIs uh, the devices are going to generate the route type 5 yeah, there is another case when route type 5 will be there uh, let's say if you have any external connection uh, which is connected to your leaf switch so all those uh, external routes that will be redistributed within your VXLAN fabric those will be seen as a route type 5 within your VXLAN fabric okay on the other hand you can see the BGP table or the updates that leaf 3 received so you can see that it knows about 10.3 and 1111 which is the Mac against 10.3 the L2 VNI against that, the L3 VNI next up, it is the 3.3.3 uh, uh, itself. And then we have the two SVI subners, okay, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the L3 VNI and the next up uh, VTAP addresses. This portion we have already discussed, which is in the center uh, that they both have SVIs 10 and 20. VNI for VLAN 10 is 10, 10, 10. VNI for VLAN 20, 20, 20, 20. We have the VRF customer A, which is having the L3 VNI 12345. The Anycast MAC address is triple A. Also for bump traffic, we are having the multicast group, which is 239.1.1.1 so we are using this particular multicast group for both vnis we uh, vni for vlan 10 and vni for vlan 20. now you can see uh, on left hand side on right hand side there is no information related to host 6 
there is only information about host one so leaf five already knows about host one okay so now let's see how the communication will take place between host one and host six so so host one uh, when we try to ping from host one to host six because uh, host one is trying to communicate into a different subnet so host one is trying to host one will try to resolve the mac address of its gateway so the gateway address for host one is 10.1.1.254 so it is going to generate the arp request leap 3 is going to uh, receive this particular arp request then it is going to reply back with the mac address against this particular ip address which is triple a or you know or you can say which is the any cast mac address okay so now host one can generate the um, icmp traffic right so now when host one will try to ping uh, host six so it will generate a packet something like that 10.1.1.3 will be the source ip destination ip will be 20.1.1.5 source mac will be 1111 and the destination mac will be the gateway mac or the anycast mac which is triple a it will send this particular packet to leave three all right so leave three is going to receive this now uh leave three will check its vrf table you can see that into uh the vrf table or into the database of leave three there is no information related to 20.1.1.5 okay but you can see that it has to uh next of for the subnet 20.0.0.0 slash eight it has uh itself and another one is 5.5.5.5 .5 but because 3.3.3 .3 .3, uh, it is the self-generated route so it is having the lower metric so it will choose this so when it will choose this particular route 20.0.0.0 slash 8 it will hit the glean adjacency and now leave 3 will try to find out the exact location where 20.1.1.5 is residing so now leave 3 is going to generate a generate an arp request okay something like that so the source ip will be the uh the gateway ip okay or the anycast gateway ip uh, let me keep it 10 so or maybe 12 source ip will be uh 10.1.1.254 the destination IP will be sorry, not 10.1.1.254. It will be source IP will be 20.1.1.254. The destination IP will be 20.1.1.5. Source MAC will be the any cast MAC address, which is triple A and destination mac it is trying to find out right so also there will be inner source mac and inner destination mac so inner source mac address will be triple a inner destination mac will be olaf because we because it is trying to find out where exactly uh, 20.1.1.5 is residing right now uh, the vxlan because see now leave three is trying to communicate into same subnet it is generating an arp request so the uh, vni will be the layer two vni not layer three vni right so let's explain it so the l2 vni which is configured for vlan 20 it is uh, 10 uh, sorry 20 20 20 so into the vxlan there will be l2 vni which is 20 20 20 udp adder there will be random source port destination port is same for 789 which is reserved for vxlan then the outer ip header the source ip will be the ip address of leave 3 which is 3.3.3 .3 .3, or the vtap address of uh, leave 3 the destination ip will be the 
multicast IP address, which is 239.1.1.1. You can see here the multicast group for bump traffic is 239.1.1.1. The outer source MAC address <clears throat> will be the MAC address of exit interface, 3131. The destination MAC will be the MAC or the multicast MAC, which is which will be derived from 239.1.1.1. So, okay, so if you, uh, I will not go into too much detail of how the, this particular ARP request will travel because uh, I have already explained in our, in our previous uh, examples how the uh, packet flows in case of multicast. So, uh, so this particular packet will be sent to spine one, spine one will do some modification into the outer uh, MAC headers and it is going to send this particular multicast, uh, not multi, I mean, this particular uh, packet that it received, it will send it to leaf five, right? Because leaf five is there into its OIL list, the multicast uh, outgoing interface list, right? So it will send it to 5151, uh, which is the next stop for leaf five. So spine one is going to send this packet to leaf five. So the outer destination MAC will be the multicast MAC itself. So <clears throat> leaf five is going to receive this particular information. And now you can see that in into the inner destination MAC, we have a FFFF, right? So now leaf five knows that it needs to flood this particular uh, remaining information or this particular payload or this particular ARP request. But exactly where it is going to flood it into L2 VNI or into VLAN 20. So leaf 5 will send this particular ARP request to host 6. So now <clears throat> host 6 is going to receive this particular ARP request. Now you can see in the ARP request the source IP is 20.1.1.254. That which is the uh, Anycast gateway or the gateway address, which is also set on host six itself. So now with this ARP request, now host six also knows what is the MAC address against this, against my uh, default gateway, right? So now host uh, six is going to reply back, right? And it is going to reply back something like this. So the source IP will be 20.1.1.5 the destination IP will be 20.1.1.254 which is the gateway IP and a minute and the source MAC will be uh, the MAC of host 6 which is 6666 and the destination MAC will be the MAC of gateway which it received from the ARP request. You can see now, so this is the ARP reply, right, which is sent from host 6, right, so host or leaf 5 is going to receive this ARP reply, right, but now you can see that the destination IP is 20.1.254 and the destination MAC is triple A. As we discussed that this is the Anycast gateway IP and the Anycast MAC address. So leaf five is also listening uh, with on this particular IP address and this MAC address. That is why this particular R reply will be consumed by leaf five itself. It is not going to travel back to leaf three. Okay, because you, we know that only five also we have the same gateway IP configure 20.1.1.254 and it is also having the same any customer address. So that is why leaf five is now going to assume that, okay, this particular R, R reply is for me. So that is why it is now going to consume this particular information and it is not going to send it back to leaf three, never, okay. So now leaf five is going to store this particular information that it just received. So 20.1.1.5, it received, right? So L2 VNI is 20, 20, 20. L3 VNI against this is one, two, three, four, five. 
it is second and it is this next hope for this particular endpoint now though leave five consumed this particular app request okay which was originally generated from leave three so now you may think that how leave three is going to know about 20.1.1.5 because leave three is waiting for this particular information which is now consumed by leave five now we have our simple funda for BGB eVPN because now leave five received some information which is 20.1.1.5 and the MAC address which is 6666 right so it received uh, this particular information from uh, port number ethernet one by four so it is going to send the BGP eVPN update okay and now with the bgp evpn update uh leave 3 will receive 20.5 and 666 and now it will know that okay it is having this l2 vni and this l3 vni and the next hope will be 555 okay something like this And also the router Mac, right? The router Mac will be DEF. So now you can see that the table for leaf three is populated with this information. Now, when the next packet comes in, you can see that there can the, the communication will be through because now once host one is trying to uh, communicate with host six the destination ip you can see that into the uh, table of leaf three into because the database of leaf three is now populated so leaf three now can generate the vxlan packet so it can encapsulate this particular packet this icmp traffic because now it has the information about 20.1.1.5 and 6666 uh, so it because it already received it from leaf 5 into the bgp evpn update so now you can see that the uh, role of route type 5 is very important because uh, in case of silent host there was no information related to host 6 uh, with leaf 3 but using the route type 5 it can generate it was able to generate the r request and then it was able to identify where exactly the uh, the end host is right so th this is how the a uh, silent host detection works using the inter subnet communication and with the help of route type 5 and when we will discuss the next example the route type 5 uh, will be more important in that scenario okay so uh, this is how the communication works or the inter subnet communication works in case of silent host and i i don't think that i need to again uh, discuss about how uh, leaf 5 or leaf 3 they are going to populate this information about the ip and uh, the mac addresses so they'll do it using the route type 2 right and the IP subnet or the SVI subnet information will be uh, sent using route type 5. But as I told you earlier also that route type 5 is purely uh, subnet based. There is no MAC address involved in that. Okay. So I hope uh, this is clear to you and see you in the next section. Thanks for watching.